something that a couple of people, we've actually had a few people a while, but a couple of people spotted and realised how useful they could be. We do do uh, a number of 12 to 5 volt adapters. This one actually is, a, well, we've actually, I think, put on the connectors, but you can either get bare wires or we've got ones that are 12 volt in and micro, you know, 5 volts on a micro uh, USB, or we've got them with micro USB A socket. So anything that we'd expect to plug into, you know, your laptop <coughs> powered can be plugged in with that and take output from 12 volts. Um, <coughs> then we come on to, yes, of course, our, our current flagship um, system, which is the, uh, the Panda Road. So it's the Panda board in a case. We've got a variety of different style cases, and that um, offers you the sort of, well, certainly the fastest risk of experience currently available. And uh, um, really various choices and options on that. And uh, it's, uh, if you want a new desktop machine, that is yeah. our recommendation yeah, as a flagship product. Yeah. Um, then, the more interesting things I expect you to think is the Pi Compute module, which I don't know, but most of you will probably seen it, we've got one here, and yes, it is, well, this is actually a memory sodium, but it is the exact same shape and size as, what the, as the Pi compute module. And now by putting the compute module on something small like that, the possibility is now for doing different form factors, <coughs> which we run this loss, is now very significant. So one of the things is we're looking at doing one um, that would be um, smaller than a Raspberry Pi and, and just sort of li uh, a bit more limited in some ways, but you know, could be used either with a lap dock, plug in straight to one of the Motorola lap docks in it, um, or put on the back of a television as a media center in something that would be thinner, well, smaller in all dimensions than a Pi. Um, and we're hoping that you know it might appeal to the wider, not just the risk loss market, you know, the wider market, so get some money in to, to, for our risk loss aims. Um, oh, this is where we, in this case, we've got a uh, magnetic um, backing to it. So if any of you want to have a Raspberry Pi that doesn't, you can sort of hold somewhere. In the fridge. Do it upside down. <laughs> the only, actually, the only thing, of course, is the cables. The cables weigh normally far more than the thing, so you do need to hold the cables some, somehow um, on that. Um, we will, um, there is already one other company doing a, a Pico, or announced they're doing a Kickstarter Pico um, high compute based system. A very reasonable price, actually, a company down in Australia. But um, it, uh, I'm not quite sure the specs they go, you got it for myself, but uh, I'm sure it will appeal to some people. They do only, they ha it has networking, it has Wi Fi on board, but no RJ45. Because, of course, unfortunately for Riscos, we, we don't have Wi Fi ability and it's not on the horizon. We all live in hope, but it, uh, it's not there at the moment. But, um, I'll afford that. Um, but um, so for the risk cost market, if you are wanting something um, so effectively Wi Fi, then of course you can use uh, a nano router, something like this, which basically takes your RJ45 Ethernet from, from your PC, your, your uh, Ionics, your Raspberry Pi, your Panda Row, whatever. Um, and power, which can be the USB, and gives you networking. Um, like, like gives you Wi-Fi networking. Once it's set up, unfortunately, of course, to set it up, most of them do require a PC. So it's not something you just go along with you and go to our PC cafe and set it up and then use it, unfortunately. But if you're wanting to use it in a, one or two locations, um, then that can be a very useful way of doing it. <coughs> uh, we will though be uh, looking at doing 
sort of a mini ITX based uh, version with the Python View module, so that you will then get, you know, two front you know, pretty much standard case similar to you know the, the three cases we use. It will give you um, yeah, yeah. Uh, front USB, rear USB, Ethernet socket, your, your, your monitor output, audio output, and then using our power control unit. Uh, um, standard power on and off and soft power um, and filing system activity, LED flashing, all those sort of things. So we're planning on doing a board. Actually, well, it's not going to be probably any cheaper because to add on all those things, actually you can use relatively cheap things. It's a bit, met, a bit of a mess inside, unfortunately. In the cases you look, there's lots of cables. Um, um, involved to do all that because they have to have a USB cable on there. We've had to put a second port hub inside the case, um, and then you have to have cables coming out of that, going to uh, the, like the USB to SATA interface, and then cables from the SATA interface to your SSD drive or optical drive, whatever. Um, but it will enable <coughs> us to do that in a much neater way. Um, on that. The, um, <coughs> I can compute module at the moment um, can't access under RISCOS the flash memory um, because what they what, what they've done is they've uh, in addition to this, they've basically taken well you could say right a model A and next to the model A instead of having an SD slot they've put a flash chip straight onto it now the sort of flash chip they've put onto it means that um, it accesses uh, it really quite quick. It really does boot up quite quickly, um, and access to the EMMC, as it's called, is is quick. It is. It's four gigabytes, and you can't add any more to it. You can't add a, uh, an, uh, an SD card or a micro SD card, unfortunately, to that directly. They can be added, but they have to go via the USB bus, which of course does slow is slower than if it could be. Um, SD bus, but um, <coughs> that uh, um, the, the the fact that uh, risk loss can't act as the MMC is um, hopefully will be sorted fairly soon. Um, ben, who wrote SDFS, had hoped it would just work straight out of the box, but it, it didn't. Do that. Last I heard, he actually only had half an hour to play with the Python module, um, so he hasn't had time to. Or, or the compute module to do that. Hopefully he, that will be rectified. Um, he didn't by any chance go if they he's got access to a web at the moment. Well, hopefully, well, the best thing we will lend in this one. I had ordered one from Farnell and one from RS, so yes, if this I could lend one out to someone, but uh, the one from RS hasn't turned up yet. A slight mistake of one of the accessories that goes with it. But um, yeah, the, the EMMC does get access quicker than the ordinary SD card, we have a fast SD card, and the SD bus on a Pi apparently is the fastest of any of the ones that are currently supported by this bus. So that should be nice and fast. But, um, so, um, yes, yeah, so. Uh, then, um, possibly, I think the more, something that might be most interesting, of course, is our plans for, for a laptop. And that basically is having seen that, oh, okay, that's there. Now, of course, these are normally put inside laptops. That's why that's normally a small outline due in my memory module. Um, so the idea is basically, as we've done a sort of proof of concept here, so using the step of the compute module and using a sort of an off-the-shelf HDMI to LVDS um, board. But as you can see on that, there's basically one chip on there and lots and lots of connectors. So we'll be getting rid of all the extra connectors and some of the extra bits and having that for your, for your display. And then, um, and then the other thing, actually, it might, it's, it's really relatively trivial, but in some ways, but, uh, could be the most uh, hardest thing to sort out, is actually connecting up the keyboard and um, trackpad 
for, to get those to work under risk classes. You basically need to go from uh, your matrix and your uh, and the trackpad to USB. Now there are um, obviously every USB keyboard out there has a chip in it that goes from that goes from matrix to USB. So that can sort out the um, uh, the keyboard side of it. Um, but it, it starts getting interesting when you talk about multiple styles of keyboard. Right, initially, we were looking at doing it for one and saying that it's a complete system. So this one, it's a, it's a standard laptop, brand new, that we've just ripped all apart. But it uses the same 15.6 inch, 1366, 768 panel. Um, and you basically have to buy it in without processor, without um, drives, optical drives, um, Wi-Fi, um, operating system. So we can buy it like that, and then, then we take out the motherboard and throw that lot. Yeah. I'm try and find a use for them. But um, that, um, yeah, we have asked, can, we support, can they support us without the motherboard? But even, even in hundreds, they said no. So, um, uh, the, uh, so we'll buy that like that and then put our bits inside it, so we effectively will be reusing their keyboard, trackpad, display, um, external power adapter, and battery. Um, actually, yes, one, one of the areas is that uh, we, have, we have no experience, and it's not something you can do using just a standard reference design, is like battery management and power management. But um, we've managed to get it back in contact with someone who was quite involved in the risk of scene a while back, who has said that uh, oh, they would help us out with the project and the DC-DC conversion is their bread and butter. And they're now um, uh, retired and are interested in, in helping us out for doing that, which is great. Um, and then another area that what we use a, a, pro, um, a PIC a program a controller on our power compute modules, we're needing something a bit, we're needing to expand on that. And the chap that helped us out with that is currently not expected to be available. So, uh, but someone else who says I've worked on dozens of, hundreds of um, microcontroller designs, he said he'll help on that. And again, someone who was quite involved in this cross community and hasn't been for some years. But uh, so it's great to see a number of people returning to the fold, as you would say. Um, because yes, the Trying to get things like the trackpad um, working um, is interesting. Um, and doing it all for just one off design is, um, should be a little bit easier than all of the, the multiples, but um, it still needs doing. Um, and uh, actually, given the experience we've had this week in getting um, this, basically it's the board from inside a Dell USB um, keyboard. And interfacing that to the keyboard that came with it. Um, apart from the fact we worked out it's one of well, we're pretty sure that one one had a sort of fairly oblong matrix and one's got a fairly square matrix. So we've not managed to wire in all all the keys. <coughs> and then we had to use key mapper too, because everything of course was being in one place. <coughs> so we've got a key mapper thing that's sort of, of every key that's well sorry there was one key, the hash key. You pressed, you pressed the hash and up came the hash first before we modified it. It was only one. Um, so, um, <coughs> so yes, because that's proving rather difficult, I'm now, well, we did get... Um, I don't know if you got the particular one here, but what I, what I did was I opened up some of these uh, combined keyboards with trackpads to work out, well, how do they do it? Um, and I thought, oh great, oh, this one, he only uses one chip um, to do that. And then I looked up the chip and found out, oh, it's actually a microcontroller. But it might actually be easier to do that, because then we may well be able to do trackpad and keyboard in one with the right software to allow it to be configured in a, in a user-friendly way. Um, now to try uh, to for the risk loss market, just having a, a portable risk loss computer 
even if yes, you Wi-Fi, sorry, uh, networking is done via an RJ45, a lot of people will sort of accept that or they can plug in a nano router. We will be offering the option of having uh, an optical drive built in, but mainly to try and appeal to the wider market, we, think, we, we were thinking, well, how can we make this more uh, appeal as like a Raspberry Pi that's portable? So we want to try and get the GPIO pins out to the outside world. And I was thinking, how on earth can we do that? Where, where can we do that? In actual fact, so we came to the conclusion of the optical drive is not that important nowadays, and that's a big, quite a big physical space to allow you to actually bring, and it's, well, it's a standard shape and sort of, I think even mounted to some extent. Um, so we're looking at doing, bringing GPIO, and what we're thinking of doing is having, um, Quite silly money, um, and if if people are expect going to have to, if we go for female on coming to the outside world, which is the most obvious, sensible thing to have, so you can't short out your lap, your power on your laptop to things. Um, we are, um, but then that means users have to plug in something like this, and these connectors can be silly money to buy. And what we're thinking of doing is having not just 26 way, but adding more than 26 by having a longer connector, but getting it, uh, adjusting the key in such that you'll be able to plug in to the left hand side the first 26, replicating standard pies. But then, if you use a larger connector, you would be able to plug in you know, a 50 or I say connector and get access to those. Not all of the signals on a Raspberry Pi are terribly good being brought out with extra connections and whatever, you end up, I believe things like the SVI bus, and by the time they've gone out to the, uh, just the, the GPO pins, the, the speed that you can access um, it at is lower than if you had them tracking straight on the motherboard. But, um, so that is the option of bringing out um, GPIO to the outside world. Um, <clears throat> And then the other thing, well, which actually hopefully might uh, catch some people's imagination even more, is our idea, idea for a DIY hardware hacker's laptop. And that is trying to make it, well, people at the moment could do their own keyboard and display and battery management. But if we can try and do things in a way that can be as open as possible, and will be um, even hacked around, modified, that area even open source, you're using crowdsourcing kind of, uh, some of that information. The idea of taking an old laptop and whipping out the motherboard and putting um, uh, a Pi Compute Module system in there. I, I'm hoping that we well, I'm hoping we might have some grants for that, although unfortunately because it, it's not improving efficiency and it's not recycling materials. It doesn't and it's not high technology, really. So most of them don't. Possible grants seem to fall between the, the stools there. But yes, it's going to be uh, uh, quite an expensive business organising this. Uh, not quite worked out. Yes, I haven't fund that all yet, but uh, we're starting off. Um, hoping that, well, believing we're going to get there. Um, so, um, and hopefully that you know, might win us some awards if uh, uh, recycling of that age up, because there must be tens of millions of <coughs> window, XP Windows computers that are still working, but people within the next few years will be junking, and you know, not really suitable for putting that one two on or something other than people will not use that, but this hopefully people will be able to see a real end, purpose, end use for it. Um, <coughs> One thing that um, was yes, we, we uh, related to it. If any of you, anyone knows, anyone might can make things like 
IO shields, this is a standard shield that would fit into an ATX case or a mini ITX case. Um, but we need to get some custom ones of those made. Is there anyone that can do that sort of thing? It's a, it's a special art a, um, uh, to do that. Or to make it look neat from the outside, a sticker that covers up whatever you want um, and mounts things. Um, this, this is what they call laminated polycarbonate. If anyone knows ways and means of either that or something similar, end up with a nice professional look to um, things, I'd be appreciative. Because at the moment I've been quoted like, I don't know, even in the hundreds to three or four pounds each, which is you know, rather a lot of money. Um, right, I think that, uh, that covers pretty well everything else, everything I want to say. Has anyone got any questions on any of these aspects of what I've mentioned? Oh the, oh, the other thing was just I would be interested to know what sort of um, price people would be think, expect a, a risk cost laptop to end up being. Someone did say, well, less than A4. Now, I'm pretty sure that <coughs> A4 was 1,995. Right? <laughs> um, and I can assure you, yes, it will be less than that. <laughs> right. okay. But, but yeah, the, the idea of trying to do it for, oh, the same as a fairly average laptop of, you know, 500 pounds is really not going to happen. Um, but uh, that's, that's, just, uh, that's just too much expense involved in it. Yeah. Please uh, let me know what um, uh, I'm not actually taking these. Yes. <laughs> Notes of interest. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>